Okay, just based on this question, I know that this might be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more difficult of a question. Uh, which statement, if true, would most strongly support the claim in the underlined sentence? So, um, the the we're going to need to focus on the underlined sentence, but unlike before, we're not being asked like what the purpose of that is. I'm still going to think in those terms, right? Like it, it's probably the case that there's some sort of summary of that underlined sentence that it can help me, but they're going to give me answer choices that include information that is not in the passage. And re remember on earlier questions, if something wasn't included in the passage, that's why we eliminated the answer choice. Here, they're telling us that all of this information in some way might be new information, but that's okay because it's supposed to, in some way, support information that's already there. So we're still going to use what's already there, but we might need to kind of connect some dots here to under, understand this a little bit better. So let's just see. Let's try to get a, a, a dumb summary, if we can, about what's going on. Um, Sandra Cisneros' 1984 novella, The House on Mango Street, made a lasting impact on U.S. literature. Its depiction of Mexican-American culture inspired later authors to examine their own heritage within their fictional works. Also influential was the book's portrayal of the main character, Esperanza, during a pivotal year of her youth. The insightful depiction of a preteen girl encourages authors who, like Cisneros herself, are Latina, to use fictional works to examine experiences from their own youth. Okay, so what do I see here? Um, this is something about Authors examining their own youth. Okay, and maybe the, it's important that they're Latina. So my dumb summary is kind of yeah something. I'm gonna basically I'm just gonna rewrite what I I highlighted. Uh, Latina authors um, inspired or encouraged, right? It's right there to talk about their youth. This feels like a lot of writing for a dumb summary, but um, it is a case where maybe, you know, we're going to need to do a little bit more thinking, like I said, because the, the choices might be a little bit removed from the passage. Let's see what we get. Uh, a, in interviews, a number of Latina authors, so so far so good, say that The House on Mango Street inspired, oh boy, uh, them to write about their own adolescence in their novels. Well, this is why sometimes if you can get a couple extra words in your dumb summary, it might be helpful. Notice it's still... Not really a full sentence, my summary. It's not the kind of thing I would put in an essay for school, but it captured a bunch of ideas that I highlighted in that sentence. And wow, they're all in choice A. So that seems pretty good. I'm not gonna get too excited though. We gotta look at all the other choices and be judicious and wise and not just jump to conclusions here. So let's look at B. Uh, in published writing, several prominent authors who are not Latina, oh boy, hmm, say that the reading uh, that reading The House on Mango Street influenced their approach to writing fiction. Well. I don't really care if they're not Latina, right? Because that, that's not what we're talking about. We're not making conclusions about non-Latina authors. We're specifically making a claim about them. So uh, you may find it more interesting that this had a much broader impact on authors of all kinds, but I don't care. The passage doesn't care. The SEC doesn't care. That's not what it's about. The underlying portion is specifically focusing us on Latinas, so we should probably specifically focus on Latinas in the... Um, the, the choices as well. Let's look at C. The House on Mango Street has sold over 6 million copies and is one of the most commonly read books among high school and university students in the US. I don't care, I don't care. That has nothing to do with anything that we've been talking about. It has nothing to do with what's in the underline. That is purely just a random fact about this book. Nothing to do with what matters here. So let's get rid of it. D, since 1984, new novels about young Latina characters by Latina authors have often been compared to The House on Mango Street. Well, okay. Young Latina characters, uh, Latina authors have often been compared to the house on Mango Street. Okay, this is tempting. So this can happen when we have hard questions. A lot of times people will say that they get down to two answer choices and they sound the same. And maybe to you that's what's going on here. And, and I understand that. So let me, let me kind of change the way we think about this question. We got rid of two answers very confidently. So now it's about really dissecting what's left. Maybe you have a feeling, right? So maybe one of these is, is speaking to you. That's okay. But I would rather have a, a really concrete reason rather than just a gut reaction. I'd rather be able to prove it. So I'm, as I, if I have two answers left, I'm thinking there's a difference between them. They may sound the same. They may include similar ideas. But there's always a difference. There's always one provable right answer. And it's not just that it's better than the others. It's not like the others are kind of right but one is more right. No, 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 no. That's not how the SAT works. The way the SAT works is one answer is provably, definitively correct, and the other three 
are provably definitively incorrect. So one of these is provably wrong. So let's see if we can get some sort of difference between them and really put them side by side. To me, the difference is clear. In A, uh, we've got the authors. Um, so I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, the Mango Street thing inspired the authors, right? That I'm kind of rearranging a little bit, but that's the, that's the essence of this, is the, the book caused the authors to write a certain way, okay? In D, it's kind of flipped. New novels um, have often been compared to the House of Mango Street. So what, what's happening here is we're talking, okay, we've got the new authors, the new books, and then we're looking at those and then going back and thinking about Mango Street. It's flipped. We, we want to say that these authors read Mango Street and then wrote their own book. What D is saying is that the Mango Street thing is almost an afterthought. It's much more about these new authors and what they did. And then after reading, you're like, huh, this kind of reminds me of the Mango Street book. That's not what we're trying to say here. And it, it's subtle, but that, that's kind of why we sensed trouble, right? So A is the right answer, because if we go back to um, what we were saying, can't fit all this on the screen, um, it, it does say the the book itself is kind of the main piece of this whole passage, but especially of that line, because that book encouraged authors to write these other characters. So the book came first. Then we have these authors writing these other great books. In choice D, the other authors are portrayed as coming first, and then we are bringing the Mango book into this. Um, again, subtle difference, but an important one, and this is how I, I genuinely go through these difficult 50-50 you know, choices. I would confidently pick A here because I can see how my summary and understanding matches better with that ordering of the ideas. It also helps that the word encouraged got me to think about the word inspired, which is literally just in choice A, right? Where is it? There it is. Um, that's a nice thing. So that's a strong word, words that have um, a lot of meaning, that pack a lot of punch that make us feel certain things, have very strong connotations. These are words that we need to notice. And so even if you didn't notice it in the passage, it would be a word I'd want you to notice in the choice as you're reading it. And then you'd be like, oh, that's a strong word. I'd love some evidence. Inspiring someone else to do something, that, that's something that needs some evidence. And sure, sir, uh, when we go there, we can see we don't get that same word. That's not how the SAT usually works, but we get a similar word. If you're encouraged to do something, you are inspired to do it. it it's basically a synonym here. So I hope this gives you a lot to think about. Uh, sir, since this is the first module, we won't have too many very difficult questions, but yes, there are a few and getting even half of those hard ones right could be the difference between getting into the hard second module versus the easy second module. And if you haven't watched this already, I highly recommend my video on the five finger formula, five finger formula, because that talks about what it takes to get into the hard module. And basically you don't want to get more than five wrong. So uh, that's why five fingers. And so in this case, this would be one. If you can get this in your column confidently, then you're in a much better shape. And if we don't get into that hard module, our score is limited to about a 600. So getting in that hard module is very important. And so getting even just half of these hard ones right uh, in the first module will set you up for a much better score in the long run by putting you in the much more competitive grouping of questions.